Thank you, Daryl. Good morning. Please stand if you are able and join me in our call to worship. Beloved children of God, in supplication and prayer, with intercessions and with thanksgiving, we come to worship God. In hope and in humility, with joy and with concerns, we come to worship God. In faith and in uncertainty, with questions and with conviction, let us worship God. Let us pray. Loving God, you hear the cries of your people for justice and mercy. You answer our prayers with the gift of your Son, who bears our burdens and sets us free. Speak your truth to us, purge and refine us, that we may love and serve you alone. Amen. Please be seated. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful, washes us clean. With one heart and voice, let us pray. Holy God, we confess that we are too concerned with our own deeds. We see the comfort of silence and ignore the cries of the oppressed. We are inwardly focused, missing the call to serve the world in justice and love. Forgive us, O oh God. Equip us to fulfill your will for a world in which all have dignity and all are treated with equity and in the love of children. Amen. God, our judge, is also our Savior. The good news is sure. In Jesus Christ, you are our witness. Now let us spend a short time in communion with God. God of life, by the power of your spirit, come to us now. Plow our hearts with your living word until we who are broken become fertile with your love. For we long to bear fruit in a world that is wasting. We pray in the name of Jesus, whose charge we bear. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah the eighth 
chapter beginning at verse 18. Let us listen for what God is saying to us through these words. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the help of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. And then turning to the New Testament, to the letter, first letter of Timothy, chapter 2, we hear these words. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, as you can see, the topic of the sermon is praying for others. And that's what I would like us to think about this morning. But before we do, let's take a moment to go over what we already know. First of all, what is praying? Well, Praying is simply talking and listening to God. It's the essence of faith. Believing there is a God who loves you and delights in hearing what you have to say. Plus, it's a two-way street. Sometimes we forget this part. Not only does God listen to your concerns and celebrations, but God also speaks through the voice of the Spirit. Now, it's not an audible voice, of course. It's more like the voice of conscience prompting you to do this and not to do that. Through prayer, God's Spirit awakens a consciousness, inspires a thought, nudges you to act, or gives you the patience not to act according to to God's will. Now, as I said, prayer is talking and listening to God. A Presbyterian minister tried to explain this in a children's sermon one Sunday morning. Now, if you know anything at all about children, you know that when you start sitting down with a bunch of them in front of a congregation of adults, there is a very strong possibility that you're going to fall on your face. You know. So he tells the story like this. He says, 
My premise was this. Talking and listening to God is like talking over the telephone. Like when Grandma calls. You can't see her, but you know she's there. And you can say anything you want, and she'll understand. She just loves to hear your voice. I brought an extension phone from home to use as a prop. I set it on the floor and made my little spiel. Then I asked if anyone wanted to try it. I was hoping one of the older kids would volunteer. I figured they'd do a little play acting and sell the idea to the younger children. Instead, a three-year-old raised her hand. Well, I didn't have much choice. I handed her the receiver and said, okay, here you go. Just say anything you want to, and God will be listening. Suzanne put the receiver to her ear and just sat there. I prompted her again. Go ahead, Suzanne. Just say whatever comes to your mind. Still, she just sat there. The clock was ticking. The congregation was waiting. Suzanne was stuck. Finally, I asked, is anything the matter? She gave me this pitiful look and said, but there's no one at home. <laughs> so much for that idea. Well, however you want to explain it, prayer is talking and listening to God. And then, you know, there are forms of prayer. Paul mentions four, petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving. Uh, when I taught confirmation class, I used the acronym ACTS. Now, you may have heard this one before, but it's A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Now, supplication includes praying for yourself as well as praying for others, and that leads to the topic today. Now, Paul says, I exhort, therefore, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in high places. Oh, man, that is a tall order. Praying for those you love is hard enough. Praying for those you don't know is even harder. And praying for those in positions of power, that borders on the impossible. So let's take it from the top. How often have you told a friend, I'll be praying for you? And the next day, you've forgotten all about it. You mean well, but hey, you get busy, you know, doing other things, or you get distracted by some personal matter, or you just get carried away by the news of the day. Others wind up taking a back seat. Do you keep a prayer list? You know, I write things down in my little handy dandy notebook here. Uh, that's something that uh, you can do. Uh, it's a way to stay focused and make good on your intentions to pray for others. And it doesn't have to be elaborate. Uh, of course, nowadays you can keep a list like that on your smartphone. Whatever works for you. The point is, when you say, I'll pray for you, do your best to follow through. Now, praying for others is important. And sometimes it can be nothing short of miraculous. But what about those times when nothing happens? When your prayers seem like they're all for naught? You pray for a loved one to be healed, but he or she dies anyway. You Pray for a friend to overcome an addiction, but nothing changes. 
You pray for a couple to reconcile their differences, but they end up in divorce. Does God answer some prayers, but not others? I've heard it said that there are three answers to prayer. Yes, no, and not now. At times, there seems to be a direct correlation between what you pray for and what happens. At times, though, it's as if you had never prayed at all. Sometimes, your prayers are answered years after the fact. Well, however it turns out, I like to think there's a bigger picture than we know. Remember, Paul said, for now we see in a mirror dimly. Some things are beyond our knowing. And often it's in retrospect that we see how our prayers were answered. So pray boldly. Pray knowing that God hears you and will bless those you pray for according to God's will in God's time. And know this, praying is never a wasted effort. Even when your prayers seem to go unanswered, just your willingness to walk through a difficult time in prayer with someone that you love means more to that person than you will ever know. But Paul would have us go on beyond praying for those we love. He tells Timothy to pray for all men, and let's add, and women. You know, face it, it's a lot easier to pray for some people than it is for others. Pray for those who rub you the wrong way, but don't stop there. Pray for your enemies as well. Remember what Jesus told his disciples. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. Pray for your enemies. Pray also for those that you don't even know. And that's actually easier than it sounds. We do it all the time. Take the mass shootings that we hear so much of, especially the ones that involve children, or the horrific flooding where people's houses are washed away, or the wildfires, or the continued plight of refugees displaced by war and famine. You don't know these people personally, but you pray for them nonetheless and often say, Lord, have mercy. Praying for others, especially those that you don't know, is one of the hallmarks of Christian love. It links you with others across every conceivable barrier. You may not share the same culture, or speak the same language, but you share a common humanity. Just as Christ died for the sins of the whole world, praying for others over the scope of the whole world brings us that much closer to living as one in Christ. So pray for all men and women, whether you know them or not, and while you're at it, pray for kings and all who are in high places. Now, depending on who's on the throne, that can be a bitter pill to swallow. If you voted for President Biden and you are pleased with some of his initiatives, he may be at the top of your prayer list. But if you voted against him, and you're really concerned about those initiatives, praying for him could be a stretch. Pray for him anyway. Pray for the president. 
and all elected officials at every level of government. Follow the admonition of Paul who told the Romans, let every soul be in subjugation to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are ordained by God. Trust that God will use the power and influence of elected officials ultimately to accomplish God's will. Take Peter's advice. Fear God, honor the emperor. Now in closing, there's one more point to make, and it's the most important of all. In praying for others, Pray that they may come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul states, God desires all people to be saved and come to full knowledge of the truth. To come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ is to drink from the wellspring of living water that will never run dry. Remember the story about Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well? Jesus asked for a drink, but the woman initially turned him down because he was a Jew and she was a Samaritan. He was a man, she was a woman. Jews and Samaritans were not supposed to drink from the same cup. That led to a brief exchange, and then Jesus told her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Stands to reason. You'd be the first to pray for a thirsty man, woman, or child that they would be given water to drink. Well, wouldn't you also want them to discover for themselves the source of that water? You'd be the first to pray for someone who's hungry to be given bread to eat. Wouldn't you also want them to taste the bread of heaven? Remember, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not be hungry, and he who believes in me will not be thirsty. And it's similar to that old proverb, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. To pray for others to be saved and come into full knowledge of the truth is to pray that they will experience for themselves the wonder of God's love, the strength of God's spirit, and the confidence of knowing that God's grace will be sufficient for their every need. No matter how you slice it, the tangible stuff of this world can never make your life complete. Your dream house will never be as big or as luxurious as it could be. The ideal job will never be without headaches. Perfect health does not last forever. True happiness and lasting peace can only be found in knowing the presence of God in your heart. Go back to that first question and answer in the Westminster Shorter Catechism. What is the chief end of, back then they said man, today we'd say of humans. The chief end of man is to know God and enjoy him forever. Once you know that Christ died for the forgiveness of your sins, that you are a child of God and that nothing can ever separate you from God's love, then you can face disaster, 
disease, even death with confidence, knowing that your life is in God's hands. And whatever the future holds, God will be with you to see you through. So, pray for others, all others, friends and family, those you know, those you don't know, those you like, those that rub you the wrong way, your enemies, and those who would like to do you in, your elected officials, whether you voted for them or not. Pray not only for their physical needs to be met. Most importantly, pray that they will come to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their lives. And as you pray for others, know that others will be praying for you. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, having heard the word of God read and proclaimed, let us rise in body or in spirit as we are able and proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this new day, for the morning sun that rises in hope, a hot cup of coffee, the chance to kiss loved ones goodbye on their way to school or to work. Thank you, God, for the purpose and meaning of our lives, for your call to serve and love our neighbors, for the knowledge that we can make a difference through a smile, a gesture, a gift of time, talent, or treasure. Thank you, God, for moments of pause that frame our lives with spiritual meaning, morning meditation, or evening devotions when we rest in your presence and recollect with gratitude your abundant blessings. Thank you, God, even for the problems and pain. Injustice frustrates and overwhelms, but also calls us to collective action and inspires us to right what is wrong. Melt our hearts with compassion, God, for the poor, the oppressed, the marginalized, for all those in need of your saving grace and your liberating love. Mold us as your hands and feet of action. Make us the answer to our prayers. Finally, hear us, God of mercy, as we lift our heartfelt concerns to you and pray silently for those whose specific burdens weigh heavy on our hearts. United as a community of faith and as the body of Christ, we lift these prayers up to you, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Hear us as we join our hearts and our voices in praying the prayer Christ taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Remember that Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The offering plates are again at the back door for your convenience. pray. Holy God, these offerings are only a portion of all that you have given us. We gratefully present these gifts and entrust them to your work in this world. May our gifts share the good news of the gospel to those who are in need. May these gifts help unburden those who have the heaviest of loads. Amen.
as we depart from this place, knowing that, yes, Jesus does love us, no matter how old we are, we're still children of God. Remember that wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who dwells within you, has something he wants to do through you. And God has given you the Holy Spirit to guide you, equip you, and sustain you along the way. Believe it and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And now, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the peace and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.